Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today the plan is simple. We're gonna be talking about how to build your first financial plan. Following the steps in this video, I was actually able to save over $60,000 in the last two years, which is well over half my income. I was able to buy a house and achieve a net worth of over $80,000. This is actually very simple and you can do the same thing. Coming up with a plan also allowed me to find some clarity, set goals, and lay out a path for the future that I can easily scale up and down as things change or as my goals change. Now, if you're new here, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Go ahead and like the video if you enjoy it. And with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, the first step in any good financial plan is figuring out where you are. If you're looking at a map and you know where you wanna go, but you don't know where you are, that map's not actually helpful at all. So take a second and do an analysis of your finances. How much are you spending every month? You can check your past bank statements. How much are you making every month? How much debt do you have? This is important because it gives you a grasp and an idea of where you are and will help you hone in your process to work the best it can for you. The first actionable step after you figure out what you're spending and what you're making is to save $1,000 in an emergency fund or a mini emergency fund. This is important because 40% of Americans actually can't absorb a $400 unexpected expense if they had a medical emergency or some car trouble. Think about this. If you have to borrow $1,000 to fix your car and you have to do it on your credit card at 17% interest, which is fairly low for most credit cards, then it's gonna take you two years to pay that off if you're paying $50 a month and you'll pay over $200 in interest. This is important because that interest is literally just lighting money on fire. And if we're able to prevent that high interest debt by insuring ourselves with $1,000, that money will go a long way. Additionally, you don't want that interest to snowball. If you are now paying that $50 towards debt every month, you're not gonna be able to use it to invest and grow your wealth. By setting this money aside in an online high interest savings account, you're giving yourself some breathing room in case water starts to rise. You're also removing it from your site allowing you to stop yourself from making impulse purchases. One of the things I love about using a high interest savings account like Wealthfront or Ally Bank is it takes a couple of days for that money to transfer from your savings account to your checking account. And this is perfect because it will prevent impulse purchases and it will force you to actually use the money like an emergency fund. In an emergency fund, you should never be using the money for a non-emergency. It should be your last resort and it's not for things like buying a new pair of shoes or going out to eat with your friends. It's for medical emergencies, fixing your car so you can get to work, and things that you don't really have a choice about or else you'll be sinking. At the risk of sounding like Dave Ramsey, the second step in any good financial plan is to get out of all bad debt. Now, you might notice I'm saying bad debt. This is because I view debt a little bit differently than Dave Ramsey. Bad debt is anything that is over about a four, four and a half percent interest rate. So credit cards, high interest loans, anything like that. Good debt is anything that's low. It might be a mortgage, it's at two and a half or three percent. This is because if you invest money, you can actually make more money on investments than you can paying down your debt. The difference is if you pay down your debt, you're guaranteed a 100% rate of return on that debt. So if you have 17% credit card debt and you pay down on it, you're guaranteed 17% return, which is really good. If you look at something like the stock market, which averages like nine and a half percent over the past hundred years or something, you can use that as a gauge to see if your debt is worth paying down or if it's better to invest it instead. Now, something to note is the stock market goes up and down. So it might average 9.5% after 10 years, but it could be down 50% one year and up 15% the next. In this case, it would make sense to get 100% guaranteed 7% return by paying down 7% interest debt than it would to take a 50% chance at getting that 9.5%. I hope that makes sense. I hope that's clear. Uh, this is really important because high interest debt is basically burning money. A second ago, I talked about how if you borrowed thousand dollars at 17% interest and you paid fifty dollars a month, it would take you two years to pay off and you would pay over twelve hundred dollars. That's a big deal because if you invested that same thousand dollars, you would actually be making money rather than losing money. Now, when it comes to paying off debt, there are two primary methods: the snowball method and the avalanche method. The snowball method is Dave Ramsey's preferred style. He talks about it a lot in his Baby Step program, and it's when you pay off your smallest balance first. So if you have a $50, 5% loan, and you have a $100, 10% loan, you'll pay off the $50 loan first. 
This is said to yield some psychological benefits as you see all of the different lenders drop off your monthly debt total. Now the other method is the avalanche method and it's where you pay off your highest interest debt first. So in this case, you would pay off the $100 10% interest first because it will save you more money over time. Now there's different arguments over the two. Mathematically, the avalanche is better. Arguments are made that the snowball is better psychologically and that you're more likely to stick to it if you do it that way. Whichever you choose, it doesn't matter. The important thing is getting out of consumer debt. Like I said before, this is debt over 4.5% interest. Under that, it is probably better to invest the difference. Once you're out of debt, you should never really have to revisit that again. Now, this next step, step three, will change as you enter different stages of your financial journey. And then it's saving up three to six months of living expenses. And this is a full-blown emergency fund. It'll follow the, the same rules as the emergency fund we covered in step one. It's gonna be in its own high interest savings account where you can't just pull money out of it willy-nilly, but where it will grow faster than a traditional savings account. Now, you might ask, why do I need three to six months of living expenses if I already have $1,000 set aside? And this is important to recognize that that $1,000 won't go very far if you lose your job for some reason. Whether we have a recession, or you just get laid off or fired, or you wanna quit, you, you need money set aside. Most people make more than $1,000 in a paycheck. So if you're expecting to be able to survive more than two weeks, even in the case of a layoff, you need three to six months of living expenses. Now this is also important to recognize, you don't wanna take any job. We want jobs that increase our financial status. We want jobs that fulfill us and provide us with a sense of purpose. By having a emergency fund set aside, we can take the right job instead of being desperate and taking any job. In addition, it's also good to have this for medical emergencies, car trouble, if you need a new roof or different things like that. Now, some of those things you can actually plan for and it's good to set money aside for those things over time, but in the beginning, that could be considered an emergency if you don't actually have money set aside for it. Something I like to mention that a lot of people don't say is that the average recession in the US actually lasts about 11 months. And so I feel really much more comfortable if I have 11 months of living expenses set aside. Some people think this is too much and you're missing out on gains, that's what I do. But anywhere from three months to a year is good. Most people recommend three to six months. I have about a year's worth, just because if you look at what we've seen with COVID, if I would have lost my job, I would still be doing okay because I had set all this money aside. So just think about it, figure out your risk tolerance and make the decision that is best for you and your risk tolerance. All right guys, if you made it to this point, you're actually killing the game. You're ahead of most Americans when it comes to bouncing back from an unexpected expense, handling a recession or other emergency. Now we get to talk about the fun part and that's growing our wealth exponentially by taking advantage of compounding returns. You'll hear a lot of different investment advice, but the easiest place to start is actually with retirement accounts. Some people think these are great, other people think they're terrible. You'll hear a lot of different words thrown around to describe them, whether that's 401k, Roth IRA, IRA, SEP IRA. For the purpose of this video, we're only gonna talk about 401k and Roth IRA. We'll make another video in the future explaining the differences and how you should take advantage of each one depending on where you're at. Now we're gonna talk about 401ks first because they're more universal and they offer good returns because a lot of employers offer a 401k match. You need to be taking advantage of your 401k match. This makes a huge difference in your wealth over time. Uh, and the way this works is if you invest 3% of your paycheck in the 401k program, it's tax-free and your employer will also invest another 3% equivalent in your 401k that's also tax-free. So you're getting double the money and none of the taxes. And tax-free in this case means tax deferred. So you won't pay taxes on it until you take it out of your account way, way, way down the road. Surprisingly enough, only 32% of Americans are actually taking advantage of their employer's 401k match. And you should be doing this. It makes a huge difference uh, over time. Like I'm gonna show here on the screen, this is the difference if you're investing $100 a month with a match versus $100 a month without a match. As you can see, you should be taking advantage of a match. It's literally free money. You don't have to invest over the match in a 401k. I actually recommend that you don't do that because I think the fees are so high, it's not worth it past the match, but the match is so valuable. It's literally free money. You should be taking advantage of it. Another great thing about this is you set it up to go automatically. You don't see it come out of your paycheck, so you're not even feeling the effects of it being gone. And when you do decide to check it, you'll see a healthy amount of money in your account. The next investment we're gonna talk about is the Roth IRA. I like the Roth IRA. I max mine out every month. That means I'm putting $500 a month into a Roth IRA. 
The reason I like this so much is it's taxed when you put the money in and when I withdraw it in 30, 40, 50 years, I'm gonna get that money tax free. This is great because I'll be earning a lot more money in 50 years than I am today. This is the basic part of financial planning for retirement, uh, taking advantage of these two accounts. And then after this, you can start pulling other levers. And if you're making a lot of money, you can start looking at backdoor Roths or mega backdoor Roths or different things like that. But for most people's first financial plan, these are the two that you should focus on. If you have more money past maxing out your Roth IRA and maxing out your 401k match, then you can start looking at individual investment accounts you can look at individual stocks if you are well equipped to do that. And you can take advantage of things like real estate or other investment vehicles that could possibly yield higher returns. Now, when it comes to knowing where we wanna go with our financial plan, it's good to have an end goal. And for some people, this means buying a boat and that's their dream. And for other people, this is getting to retirement and knowing that they're gonna have enough money to live on for the rest of their days. So if you wanna know how much it takes for you to live on indefinitely, then you need to take a look at the 4% rule. The 4% rule states that for every dollar you spend in a year, you need 25 times that to retire. So if you're spending very little money, you might actually not need that much money to retire. And if you're spending a lot of money, you'll need a lot more money to retire. But by taking advantage of these retirement accounts and calculating how much money you spend in a year and multiplying by 25, you can actually see how much money you need to retire. And this is good because it gives you a goal and something to aim for and something to work for, and it helps you track your progress on the way to retirement. This is great because a lot of people are just saving money until age 67. They don't actually know if they're gonna have enough or if they won't have enough. And they don't know that maybe they could retire earlier. Maybe they could retire at 40 or 50 or 55. So look at these levers and then you can play with it and you can invest more or save more if you wanna retire earlier and you can invest less or save less if you wanna retire later. This is just something to think about because you need to begin with the end in mind so you can maximize the joy you can extract out of the money that you have while you have it. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope you learned something and I hope this is helping you on your journey to financial fitness. Uh, if you are new, again, go ahead and smash the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I hope to see you here for the next one. Until then, peace.